Hey, what's that? Is that an actual good Adam Sandler movie? That's crazy. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today is more Adam Sandler Week. Is everybody having fun on the first annual, the 2019 Adam Sandler Week? Because I am. I'm having, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying my... Where's my, uh, where's my muscle relaxers at? Hold up a second. All right, cool. So now that I've done some drugs, we're back. We're ready to talk about the only film I've ever seen with Adam Sandler in that I would call an objectively good movie. But it all was bullcrap. It was a heckin' joke. And when I think of you, Linda, I hope you freaking joke. The Wedding Singer came out in 1990-something. It features Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler once again. This is the third one I've talked about within three, and it's the only three movies that they're in. And this is the very first one. This is where it started at all. This is where the chemistry of these two actors start on the screen. And I have to say, it, it kind of shows. Like, when you get into 50 First Dates and Blended, their chemistry is so good together in those movies that, like, in The Wedding Singer, watching this one last, it was kind of a little bit disappointing. It's not bad. In fact, it's still pretty good. But it's so clear that these two characters or these two actors know each other so well in future movies. That in The Wedding Singer, it's like, yeah, I believe this. Like, it makes sense they fell in love, but not to the extent that I felt in Blended, which is an objectively awful movie compared to this. What The Wedding Singer does well is that while it still does have some of those, like, Adam Sandler tropes that are bad, like, dumbass characters like this old woman that keeps talking about Adam Sandler's penis multiple times she was bad and there's there's some other bad characters I guess but but what it does well is that it has like an actual plot that is followed through the entire movie there's no filler like some of these movies have it's literally just a rom-com it follows the same beats as a traditional romantic comedy does and there's actually funny stuff in here. There are actual funny stuff in here. And I think it's because Adam Sandler gets depressed. And I think a depressed Adam Sandler makes for a funnier movie. I'm not going to lie. That sounds a little hard. But let me tell you this. How many videos of mine have you watched where you said, <laughs> he looks like he's in pain. <laughs> this is really funny. My Titans video. My Fallen 76 video. My Pokemon Waifus video. These are all moments of darkness. I hated myself when making those videos, but you laughed. You thought it was funny. And I understand because when Adam Sandler goes up on a stage and he starts screaming about wanting to kill himself in front of everybody, it's the funniest shit. And I, I love, I, I've i never laughed this hard at a movie with this man in it, at this one particular scene. It was the funniest I should probably talk about the plot. The Wedding Singer is about Adam Sandler as he, he's a wedding singer. He sings at weddings. He's about to get married. And it just so happens that when he gets on his wedding day, he's been excited for his wedding day his entire life. But when he gets up there at the altar, she doesn't show up. And then he becomes depressed and he quits singing at weddings. And through all of this process, he ends up meeting Drew Barrymore, who is about to marry somebody as well. It just so happens that the dude that she's about to marry is a, he's a dick. He's an asshole. Nobody likes him except for her for some reason. He's got a lot of money. So her mother is like, hey, you should marry this dude because he got a lot of money. And it's like, that's just how it be sometimes. Probably when I'm going to find somebody, I have a lot of money. I'll be like, hey, girl, I got a lot of money. And they'd be like, all right, let's go. Let's get married. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to let anybody know when I have a lot of money. I'm going to find a girl that loves me for me. I'm not even going to say how much money I got. In fact, I'm going to make her pay for the first day. That's how you find true love, boys and girls. That's how you do it. Anyways, Adam Sandler's upset. Drew Barrymore's, she, she kind of upset too. They meet each other. They're like, hey, I kind of love you. They end up kissing randomly because like Drew Barrymore's friend is like, hey, have you practiced kissing for your wedding day yet? 
And Adam Sandler just happens to be there. She's like, why don't you just try on him? And so they kiss, even though I don't think this would ever happen in real life. And then like five minutes later, Drew Barrymore's friend is like, I'm, I think I'm going to date him. And then she tries to like, she tries to oh, 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 with, with Adam Sandler. And he ends up like saying, no, I can't do that because I actually, actually like Drew Barrymore. And uh, it's cute. It's, it's a good movie. I really like this movie. Um, I would definitely watch it again. Out of all the Adam Sandler movies I watched this week, I think this is, this is definitely the best one of them out of the five that we're talking about this week. I don't think it's quite my favorite. I think I like 50 First Dates a little bit more, but it's, uh, it's definitely up there. It's still got, still got a lot of charm to it, which is nice. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Humble Bundle Monthly. If you've been watching Your Everyday Nerd for a couple of months now, you will notice that I really love the Humble Monthly program. It allows you to get a group of games, usually over $100 to $200 worth in value for only $12 a month. This month, if you sign up right now, you can go ahead and unlock the games, Warhammer Vermintide, Cultist Simulator, and Earth Defense Force. This is just the beginning though, because once March 1st hits, you'll be getting a whole other group of games delivered right to your inbox. What's even better is that if you become a subscriber, you're not only getting these games, but you can get access to the Humble Trove, which is over 60 DRM free games that you can download and play whenever, even when you're not a subscriber anymore. As a Humble Monthly subscriber, you also get 10% off of the monthly store, 5% of everything gets donated to charity, and you can cancel anytime. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe for multiple months for even cheaper, you can subscribe for 3 months, 6 months, and 12 months at a time, leading all the way up to getting a full month for free if you get the 12 month subscription. Check out the details in the description box below, and if you do decide to sign up, you'll be supporting your everyday nerd. But anyway, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts about the wedding scene are. It's a good movie. We'll check it out if you haven't already. And tomorrow, we're talking about Jack and Jill. I don't want to talk about Jack and Jill.